Lewis, the images of the arrest of George Floyd that ultimately led to his death were appalling, of course. But sadly, other incidents involving both men and women have happened in America in, in a similar way. What is it about this particular death that has gathered so much momentum and motivated you to have such a passionate response to it? Well, I think it's... Uh... Yeah, obviously, it's a, um, I think it's quite painful for a lot of people to have seen. Basically, obviously, that one particularly has been the clearest video uh, proof of shown of the, uh, the attacks that had been on black people uh, in, in the States. And, you know, you, you, they're, they're, you know there's over a thousand uh, killings by the police in the States every year. And 99% of those every single year go without conviction. Um, and I think being that we had that video that everyone could see in plain sight, I think um, just speaking on my personal ex experience, it, it brought up a lot of anger, a lot of pain from previous, from experiences I'd, as I had growing up. Um, uh, and, and I got to you know, bring those up to, for example, my parents who, who were there with me through those difficult times. And it re I was like, I, I think for me, just feeling like I could not stay silent during this period of time, and I think many, many people around the world, you know, and I got to go and visit the, uh, go on the march in London, um, the Black Lives Matter uh, protests, and it was really amazing to see people from different walks of life, um, uh, all colors, um, supporting this, and it's really not a, uh, it's, it's, this is not a battle, a fight against other races, this is asking for equality above, uh, above the board. Certainly, in, in from me, lockdown meant I probably had more time to reflect on what was going on in the world as well. So it had a more dramatic effect. Do you think that well, was anything to do with it? Uh, I think, I mean, with the protests, I'm sure people not being at work, it's definitely given people more time to, to um, realize the sheer magnitude of the situation and, uh, and go out and fight for, for you know, what nothing, you know, um, uh, Martin Luther King was fighting for this 60 years ago and it's been fought for for hundreds of years before that and it's crazy to think still 60 years after Martin gave his life to, to fight for our freedom it's still happening around the world and what's crazy is people think that it's only in the states you know the, the killing uh, from police officers yes but in terms of um, systemic racism it is all over the place it's still across uh, across all of Europe and I've experienced it and see it every year. And uh, I've got friends that also experience the same thing. So um, I think this is a time for reflection. This is time for us to, it, it's never too late to, to educate yourself. It's never too late to learn. Um, and so this is a time where we, we do need to educate ourselves. We need to encourage our friends to take a moment and try to understand why we're in this position and, uh, and how we can do better to be, you know, because we are all the same. You've talked about racism you experienced in your junior days karting in the UK and, and in Europe. We saw the totally unacceptable behaviour of the fans in the grandstands, 2007, Barcelona. I suspect you've got other stories to tell as well on that. Uh, have you ever experienced racism inside, in the inner sanctum of Formula One, do you think? Uh, apart from like with the fans? Apart from the fans, I mean in the paddock, in Formula One itself. Uh, I have, I won't. I won't talk about which that experience was, but I, I, I have, particularly in the earlier phases of my career here. Um, and, um, but in, I would say since I've, over the last years, I haven't, it's not something that I particularly see. What I do see though is, is very much like when I was at school, I'd go to school as 1,500 kids and I was one of maybe five or six black kids and you feel quite alone and um, the whole thing that it, the feeling that you're led to not feel like you're particularly fit you fit in into society and, and you know, when you walk into the paddock of one there aren't very, very you know there might be one or two other people of color in this whole paddock and in all the teams and i've known it, this is nothing new for me i've this has been the case the way it has been since i got to form one since i started casting it's been something i've been talking to toto about really trying to improve diversity within our, in our team. 
and it's great that he's been so open to 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 listening and not kind of fighting back because a lot of people do kind of take offense to it or you know feel like it's a you're, you're being targeted but it's not about that it's about working together moving forwards being understanding and um, trying to improve uh, on social media you appeared to call out the other drivers on the grid to be more proactive to support this but actually reading it again maybe it was a, a broader wider call to to the f1 community yeah it wasn't it wasn't aimed at anybody in uh, it wasn't aimed at um the driver specifically it was named at everyone in not only in my sport but in in across you know I, i've got friends that are in other businesses friends that are in um other sports who are big leaders within those sports with massive platforms saying nothing i've got friends in the music industry that are saying nothing um and we need every single person's voice. Um, it doesn't matter how big a following or how small a following you have, you still have a voice. And the important thing is that we all use our voices together because collectively we can make a huge impact together. And I just think that we all have a responsibility with, with our platforms instead of posting things and bring awareness to, you know, I don't know, adverts. You, you, we should take a moment also, not just, it's not just taking a moment out of your day to also do what everyone else is doing by posting uh, Blackout Tuesday just so you can say you also participated. It's actually doing that but then, you know, because black people don't have, they don't have the time to be able to take a moment, just a moment. We've got to stay on this because otherwise it will never change. And um, so that's why we need, we need people's help, we, you know. Motorsport lives by the stopwatch uh, and the stopwatch is blind. It doesn't know gender or ethnicity. Uh, of course, that's just talking about the drivers, uh, and it's a much bigger sport than that. But we completely lack diversity, there's no doubt about it. Um, that can only be then because people don't have the opportunity to, to come into motor racing, um, or they, d they don't have a desire uh, to come into, a, into our, our sport, or they don't feel they'd be welcome or, or comfortable here. But how do you see it? Well, it's definitely the lack of opportunity is not the same. The, the, again around the world that the the opportunity for black people is not the same for as it is for white people and it's the same also for for uh, asians um so i think it definitely is opportunity it's you know the education system is not is not great um it, you know if you look at uh, the opportunities and that really that's why i've commissioned this um the the hamilton commission is because you don't you, you, you can't fix what you don't know so Everyone has an opinion of why there, there is no diversity here, but I really wanted to get to the root of what the real cause is and try to understand it. And it all starts from education. So it's trying to understand and collect as much information as I can so that I can make sure that when we put money towards a cause, it's not just doing it because uh, that, you know, because some people just do it to be a part of it, you know. You know, if you look at sustainability, it's come up the order, the list of priorities with all in all these companies over the time as people start to make more and more noise about it, um, as where it used to just be a bullet point on their list of things to do, but now it's more of a priority, and it's the same thing with this. Um, so we're really just trying to make. I'm trying to make sure that I get as much information so I can really know exactly where the issue is and how we can fix it. How will this commission work? It's in partnership with the Royal Academy of Engineering. Uh, how will you measure success? What, what, what are the goals? How is it going to be funded? Well, the thing is we don't know what the results are going to be. So we can't pretend to know what those are going to be. So it's really making sure that you put the right commission board together. So it's a, 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 an elite group of um, intellectual individuals, a lot of them on the, on the ground in um, working directly in, the, in black communities. It's um, high-end politicians who can really put the results we we find into effect and come up with really, um, you know, once we've got all this information, they'll be, they'll be able to come up with some idea of, or some solutions of how we can implement these changes, whether it's changing the curriculum, whether it's, um, you know, for example, when you look at, at these, the teams and they say, well, there's not a lot of, when we're going to hire people, there just aren't a lot of black people or minorities um, going for the jobs. So why is that? Why are, um, there are black kids that go to university, but a lot of them don't make it through. A lot of them put back out. Why is that? So we're going to do a very, very broad um, uh, exercise where we're going to be doing lots of interviews. 
collating a lot of the different um, commissions that are out there and bringing it into one hub. And you know, my my goal is to is in ten years time to have a different outlook here to, for it to, to be diverse um, and and for it to be open, you know, uh, uh, inclusive and equal. Is this your mission? Is this your passion for the future? Maybe after you finish driving. Well, the thing is, people might think that, I mean, just so you know, this is not a knee reaction from this Black Lives Movement thing. This is already something that I had already engaged already from December. The idea came in December and, um, and we've been on it since then. It just so happens that the Black Lives Movement thing came around um, kind of in perfect time. But um, yeah, I think, over, uh, I think over this time during COVID, there have been, whilst it's been terrible in so many ways, um, in terms of not being at work, having time to focus, you know, I, I um, during my time off and um, between this whilst training, I've been focusing on the Hamilton Commission. I've been focusing on uh, the work that I'm doing with Fight for Peace in London, uh, the global goals. Um, I've been working, trying to figure out how I can implement better um, setups within my own team and then talking a lot with the large organizations. So I've been on the phone a lot with a lot of the partners. Um, Formula One is very much a part of some of the shift you're gonna see this weekend, pushing Formula One, uh, sorry, my team to have the car in the black livery, which we'll have this weekend. So I've been super busy and I think definitely discovering your purpose over time. Uh, I definitely think this is definitely gonna be a part of uh, my legacy. Are you planning to take a knee on the grid at some point? And if you do, will you expect everybody else on the grid or certainly the other drivers to support you to have solidarity with that? Well firstly I don't expect anything from anybody I think um, I've not spoken to all the other drivers during this time the, the, the question has been asked to me and honestly it's not been something that's been on the top of my mind um, I, I, I've not come here this weekend with a, a determined um, mind frame to, to go and kneel at the start of the, of, before the race so I, I really don't know I think you'll see on Sunday whether I decide to do that and whether I feel it's appropriate. But um, I hope that we are all united one way or another. I'm sure the drivers will speak before the race, so we are kind of aligned. Um, as I said earlier on, you know, calling out a large group of people, it's all the teams, it's all the drivers, it's, it's the media, it's, all, it's, it's everywhere throughout Formula 1, through catering, through marketing, through just through you know, engineering, through every different aspect, there's so many opportunities out there and we need to make it more open and more accessible.